Hello everyone, this is Dr. Corey Glenn, and I appreciate you joining me again for the Glenn Dental Podcast. This is episode number two. And so when I started this podcast, I had every intention of, of keeping it lighthearted, just giving some information to my patients and uh, helping them get to know me. But here we are only episode number two, and I'm feeling a burden to talk about some more important issues. Uh, you know, things that are near and dear to my heart, things that I feel are important. And my hope is that in doing this, that you're gonna join the fight with me uh, and help raise awareness on these important topics. So what I wanna talk to you about today uh, is not necessarily a dental related thing, but it's a chemical that we're all being exposed to uh, routinely. Uh, this is a chemical called dihydrogen monoxide. Um, it's a chemical that is very common. Um, that many of us are not aware that we're getting every single day in our diets, in, in the air, many things that we do. And there's some pretty serious effects from dihydrogen monoxide that we're gonna go over. It also got, goes by the name of DHMO. Uh, that's what I'll refer to it throughout this. And the reason that DHMO is such an important uh, topic for me to address right now is that as I mentioned in uh, my previous podcast, I'm actually just getting over uh, eight months of leukemia treatment. And one of the things that really concerns me is that when they did the bone marrow biopsies on me, uh, they consistently found high levels of DHMO in my blood and in the bone marrow. Uh, and that makes me really suspicious to think that there's a, a good causation uh, there of potentially this DHMO and my leukemia, because it turns out that it's actually found in many people's bone marrow biopsies that end up having leukemia. So I think this is an important fight to fight and I hope that you'll help me raise awareness. One thing I would just ask of you, please like this post and share it. Uh, it's too important not to. And I also hope that after you uh, watch this, that you'll go to dhmo.org uh, and look up some of these facts. They are my source for most of the information that I'm gonna be giving you. And they are doing God's work of, of you know, disseminating this information and helping everyone become aware. And so I hope you'll go there and check them out. So let's talk a little bit about DHMO. What is it? Uh, what are the problems with it? And uh, what can we do about it? Uh, first of all, DHMO, it's a colorless, odorless liquid in its natural form. The stuff is highly, highly caustic. Uh, it's known to corrode metals. Uh, it is known to denature proteins. It is known to cause mutations in DNA. Uh, so a lot of bad things that this stuff can do. Um, it's a carrier of many diseases. So this is something I, I don't ever hear the CDC talking about this. Um, I, I don't hear any of our politicians or the media talking about this, but not only is it harmful, it actually carries many of the diseases that are killing people around the world, particularly undeveloped countries. Um, so it's it's bad news. There's a lot of problems with this chemical uh, We don't ever hear about it, right as I'm talking about DHMO. You've probably never even heard of it um, And why is that? Well, there's a lot of uh, political pressure on politicians to not do anything about DHMO There's many special interest groups a lot of money that goes into keeping awareness on DHMO down um, so you won't hear our president talking about it. You won't hear our politicians talking about it. It's up to us, the grassroots, to do something about DHMO, and that's what I'm trying to do here. Um, and I'm gonna specifically call out our politicians. President Obama, I don't see you doing a thing about DHMO. My local congressman, Dr. Scott Desjardins, you're a medical doctor. You need to be leading the fight on DHMO. Uh, so again, put pressure on your politicians to see them do something. Um, let's talk about some of the effects of it. So uh, this chemical, it's, it's a well-known fact that inhalation of it will cause death. Uh, it's a 100% chance that you will die if you inhale this stuff in enough quantity. Um, in its vapor form, it causes severe, severe burns. Now both of those things, um, the inhalation and the burns are stuff that happens every single day in America. We don't hear a word about it from the media again or the politicians. And again, I can only assume that is because of these powerful special interest groups uh, trying to suppress that truth. We can have skin altering effects. So if you're exposed to this stuff for very long with your skin, you're gonna notice some severe changes with your skin. Um, and some of us might have had that and not even known what the cause was. Again, I mentioned it's powerful enough that it will corrode metal. It's a major component of acid rain. 
And it's not just that it causes um, issues when we come in contact with it. It's got massive implications to the world around us. Um, this is a byproduct of many industrial processes. It's a byproduct of internal combustion engines. Um, so every time you're cranking your car up and driving to work or to the store, you're releasing this stuff into the atmosphere. And as you're doing it, it has serious implications on our atmosphere. We hear a lot of talk and concern about global warming, um, about El Nino, about climate change, and DHMO is a big player in all of those things. And so again, we've got to raise awareness. We've got to make sure people know about this stuff. Again, I mentioned that it's a, uh, an industrial byproduct. We have many uh, industries here in Franklin County, Nissan, Zanini, many, many different companies. And I know for a fact that a lot of their processes uh, in, in their factories where they're making cars or parts or whatever they're making, they're releasing this stuff as a byproduct. Um, so it's going into our ground once they use it. And obviously that gives exposure to all of us for DHMO. Um, it's being used in animal research facilities. So for example, when they're doing uh, animal trials on these harmless animals, these helpless animals, and they're trying drugs out on them and different things like that, it's a known fact that oftentimes they are using DHMO in those processes and killing innocent animals. Um, it, this was a really concerning one to me. It's actually involved in uh, a lot of the GMO crop farming. So I don't know if you've kept up with the controversy on that. There's a big, um, uh, a big thought out there that these genetically modified crops are really causing damage to us. And as it turns out, when they analyze these GMO crops, they're finding really, really high levels of uh, the DHMO in them. And so that's very concerning to me, again, especially uh, knowing that I've had high levels of uh, DHMO in my system myself. Uh, it really concerns me to know that some of the foods that I'm eating, I'm getting a lot of that in them. Uh, what else can we talk about DHMO? Um, it's, uh, it's used in a lot of uh, things that we would say are, are not the best things. Um, the adult film industry is using this stuff extensively. Um, it's known to be used in houses of prostitution. Uh, it's known to be used in abortion clinics. Um, it's been used by, uh, w we wonder sometimes about the mind altering effects that this stuff has because it's a well known fact that many of the, the people that we would look at as despicable, uh, people like the KKK, ISIS, those groups are known to, to be uh, in high levels of exposure to this stuff. And so it makes you wonder what kind of effects it's having on their minds. Um, you know, uh, you know, serial killers are known to be used, uh, to known to be users of this chemical. Um, we just see so many bad things that are going on in the world and a lot of times we see DHMO right there with them and it's too suspicious not to assume that it's related in some way. Um, what's really concerning, it's being added to all of our processed foods. So anytime you buy something at the store, uh, even when you uh, go to a restaurant, your food is just chock full of this DHMO stuff. Uh, it's even in baby food. I mean, we're giving this stuff to babies knowing the harmful effects that it has. And again, silence from our government, from the CDC, uh, from our politicians, just nothing. We're, we're just hearing nothing at all about it. So we've got to... Uh, band together and we've got to do something about this chemical. Now, if you've uh, listened this far, you might have noticed that I'm laying this on pretty thick. And uh, there's a reason for that is because it's, it's just total crap. There's not a, a bit of this that you really need to be concerned about. And I apologize for uh, wasting seven minutes of your life if you got your blood pressure up and you're really concerned and we're about to start calling your congressman and the president and all these people. Um, there's nothing that I've said to this point that is untrue either though. Again, go to that website, dhmo.org, and look some of these things up for yourself because again, they are all 100% factually true. Um, inhalation of DHMO uh, is definitely uh, associated with um, uh, dying. And that's because DHMO goes by another name. And uh, if you analyze the dihydrogen monoxide, it's two hydrogens, it's one oxygen. We also call it H2O and it goes by the other name water. Uh, again, inhalation of water is known to cause death. Um, in its gaseous form, it is known to cause burns. And so everything that I've said to this point, my bone marrow biopsy was chock full of DHMO uh, because all of our bodies, all of our blood, all of our bone marrow is chock full of DHMO. 
And so the reason that I have uh, led you along like this is because I wanted to point out a few things that I think are really important. And the biggest one is that causation is not the same as correlation. Or I could say it a different way, just because you see something is correlated doesn't mean that it's what caused it. Uh, just to give you a quick example of that. So every morning I go and get on my scale and it tells me I'm fat, basically. Um, so by that logic, I could come up and say, well, it's obvious that my scale is what's making me fat. Uh, in reality, none of us would look at our scales and say it's your fault that I'm gaining weight and that I've got this big number uh, that I'm not real happy with. But we all know that that's not the case, right? Just because there's a correlation between me standing on my scale and seeing a number I don't like doesn't mean that my scale caused it. And that's very important because uh, as medical professionals, dentists, doctors, um, surgeons, all kinds of uh, different medical uh, people face this every single day and uh, we get questions from our patients that um, go through this, this uh, error in their logic and assume that just because something was correlated, uh, that's what caused it. So a couple of my favorites in dentistry, um, you know, I, I had great teeth until I had a baby. The baby sucked all the calcium out of my teeth. Uh, you would be amazed how many times we hear that. And again, don't think that we think less of you for saying something like that. This is a common uh, error and, and it might seem logical to you that that's the case. However, when your teeth come into your mouth, they are fully formed. They've got all the calcium, uh, the, all the phosphorus, all the things that they need, they are fully formed uh, when they come into your mouth. And so from that point, you can get surface level degradation, you can get some acid erosion of the enamel, which can in very little amounts be rebuilt. Uh, but in general, your teeth are what they are once they erupt. And if you develop cavities thereafter, it's not because the baby sucked your, your calcium out, but that just biologically cannot happen. Um, we've got to look deeper. So there is certainly a correlation a lot of times with you know having great teeth and then once you have a baby, you start to notice problems. Some of that's coincidence. Uh, but if we look deeper, we can see some other factors that do play into that. One of the things that happens when you're pregnant is that you tend to have a lot of morning sickness. Uh, and so you're, you're throwing up a lot. And when you're throwing up, what's getting all over your teeth is acid. And that acid is what uh, contributes to eating away at your teeth. Uh, we also know that it's easy to gag when you feel that way. So many times people are not brushing uh, their mouth like they should during pregnancy because even just sticking a, a brush on their tongue at all uh, makes them want to throw up again. They gag so easily. Um, what else? You know, acid reflux when you're pregnant. Again, if you've constantly got acid backing up in your mouth because you've got a baby sitting on your stomach and it's pushing that acid up, um, again, that's going to take uh, a toll on your teeth. And so we need to look beyond just assuming that because you're having a baby, it's sucking the calcium out of your teeth. That's actually not what's going on, but there's some legitimacy to what could be going on. Uh, what are some of my other favorites? Um, how about uh, my parents had dentures, so I'm guaranteed to have dentures. Again, that's not true. Uh, just because your parents had dentures um, doesn't mean anything for you. Now, unless they've given you some inherited genetic trait, uh, you know, that causes you to lose bone around your teeth or something like that, but those are really, really rare and they are few and far between. Um, in general, if well taken care of, if cared for properly, your teeth should last you. Um, so what we oftentimes see is that uh, there may be a subset of people where they don't have uh, proper hygiene protocols, they don't know to go to the dentist to have their teeth checked, uh, they don't know the warning signs of when something's going on, and it's just a, uh, uh, people just don't know how to take care of them. And oftentimes, if a parent is like that, it's going to end up uh, causing them to lose their teeth, but their parents are picking up on their same behaviors, right? And so the child ends up having the same behaviors, the same diet, all the same things that led to their parents' uh, teeth's demise, uh, they have going against them as well. And so we can't just say that, you know, my parents gave me bad teeth, um, I'm going to lose mine as well. That's actually not true. Uh, what about uh, root canals cause cancer? We'll have uh, a specialist on and talk about this one at length, but uh, you know, there's been quacks who have come out and said that, oh, so-and-so study shows that 90% uh, of people who died of this, that, or the other uh, had a root canal in their mouth, and therefore, uh, root canals were what caused them to die. Again, that's a, a logical fallacy. 
It just so happens that there's an enormous uh, portion of the population who has had a root canal, and so you could do autopsies and, and find that finding on anything and attribute it to that. I could, I could say that 80% uh, uh, of redheads have root canals, and so uh, you know, there's no correlation between those, right? Uh, being redheaded and having a root canal has nothing to do with each other. Uh, getting cancer and having a root canal has nothing to do with one another, uh, but there are people who have an interest in you believing that, and you always need to look at what they're selling before you start believing this. They might have a cleanse uh, or some benefit to you getting your, your tooth out um, uh, to make you believe that, okay? So be very careful about what you believe and what people are trying to sell you. Uh, another one of my favorites is, you know, my tooth didn't hurt until you messed with it. You know, you did the filling, you tried to fix it, and now my tooth hurts. It never hurt before. Um, this is one we hear all too often. And the reason it's concerning is because it's very easy to place the blame on the dentist. Um, but we gotta think beyond that. I mean, consider the fact that when you've got a cavity in your tooth, oftentimes you will never feel that cavity hurt you one little bit until it's too late. And by too late, I mean until that cavity reaches the nerve. Uh, once it's starting to hurt, you're kind of in a bad position to start with. Even if it hasn't started hurting yet though, oftentimes those cavities can be very deep. They're just insulated because there's all that mushy decay around there, insulating it from hot and cold things. And in the process of when we're trying to fix your teeth, uh, let's say doing a filling, we have to get all that crud out of there. We have to clean it up. Sometimes that can end up close to the nerve and sometimes there can be some post-operative sensitivity with that. And of course, we, we catch the blame for messing up your tooth when in fact the tooth was messed up and the efforts to fix it uh, can sometimes have effects like causing sensitivity. Uh, if it's really, really deep, sometimes the nerve will end up dying. It doesn't like that the fact that the tooth had to be messed with, um, but don't just assume that your, your dentist screwed you up. Um, so all of this to say, I hope that you'll just kind of be careful in what you, uh, what you believe when you're reading it or seeing it on TV. Um, there's lots of gloom and doom out there, and there's a lot of money behind that gloom and doom that would like to see you go down whatever path they're steering you towards. Again, whether that's, uh, you know, get rid of your metal fillings uh, so that I can replace them with a tooth colored and uh, give you this cleanse that costs $100. There's a lot of shady things that go on and it's in, it's in all fields. Um, we see a lot of that. So be very careful. Make sure before you're, you're putting too much stock in something that you know that there's credible research to it. Anyone can come out with a, a just crazy statistic and tell you that it's true. It doesn't make it so, right? Uh, make sure that there's peer reviewed research on that, uh, that it's accepted within the medical dental community. And if it's not, you need to make sure, hey, you're number one, buddy, all right didn't like the fact that I'm going the speed limit. All right. First uh, flip off doing the podcast. I like that. So just be mindful that when you hear a lot of these things, you've got to take them with a grain of salt and realize that uh, just because someone says it and they say it convincingly doesn't make it so. Uh, so I appreciate you joining me for episode two of the Glenn Dental Podcast. And if you've got questions, definitely let us know. I'd be happy to talk about them on future podcasts. And if you need to contact us, our number is 931-967-1933. And we're happy to help you out with any dental needs that you might have. Uh, great talking with you. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye.